Sup, everyone. I'm back with more Greatest Eternal. Let's kick it. Time to do some cross examinations. How can you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen of our sworn, sworn duty. And yet you took out a gun in court. Somehow I feel like that's probably against that. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? Can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man is what the job's all about. And that is why I can stand here today besides my long suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sir! Oh, Rolly, you're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Do do do. Da 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 la da 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 da. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Miss and Miss, Mr. and Miss Garridan? I see, sir. You should have said so earlier, sir. Yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir. I will answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Garrett of domestic dispute can't be related to this case. But before I get to that, that is what they... Yes? I very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet, I've only just arrived here. So to that end, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your personal perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you, I'll try. Oh, we actually got it. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Let's go examine that right now. Might as well. No time like the present, as I say. Okay. Ahem. Item 1. A policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Item 2. A patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the f furtherance of community relations. Wait, Metropolitan, Principal, okay. Item 1, any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. Item 2, when a crime is discovered on this beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Okay. Interesting. I don't, I don't know how that's gonna come into play, but I assume it will somehow. By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir. They are just there to allow a, a bit of air through the house, you see. So they're restricted as to how much they open. Not a hold on air. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Oh yes. Directly opposite the scene of the crime on the other side of the very wide road. Would it have been so hard for someone to mention this top hinged casement thing before? Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows missing Mr. and Mrs. Garrett's house is furnished with? Ah, oh, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. She has the owu eyes. Might as well. Excuse me. What's up? Do you have something to add, Miss Beat? Huh? Sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering, that's all. 
We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rolly's beat. It was so close, you see. Uh oh, I already see it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phone. We saw this. We looked at this yesterday. Reporting officer. Rolly beat. Excuse me? Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh, yes, that street, Briar Road. That's the boundary between Rolly's beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Constable Beat. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, that's right. Well, that was a new one. That's the reason I was helping out with inter interviewing the occupants of the Garrett household yesterday. The house is on my beat, you see, sir. Uh, that really was cutting it close, um. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. Pulls out infinite reading material. If the Garrett household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Garrett's house. Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of Briar Road. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. We would never have been able to go uh, go for that meal to celebrate our, w our wedding anniversary. Extraordinary people are, Bobby, is tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good lord's way of rewarding my, my Rilly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be a pat, my love. That must be it. So he's saying, I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narhoto. I'll take care of it immediately. Where the cons- Okay. The pavement where the victim was found was just outside Constable Beat's Beat. Constable Beat's Beat. The board border on which runs down the middle- Okay. And now it's my turn, I think. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. Huh. Uh. Okay. Let's just keep pressing. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Oh, but Rilly and I are strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for our lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can it guide you to answer the question? If a flaming book had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let Rolly be an inspector, I would have said. Three times at least. Of course, what well, with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir, that is correct, sir. As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir. Hmm, it certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to help her. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Rolly was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If it had been on Rolly's beat, it would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. It can't be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. So Rolly told me the way, only I sort of got a little lost on the way. The 
Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a room. Oh, please. So I suppose I was gonna- I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my role was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. Unless he's a corrupt cop, I'm on to you, sleepyhead. I was off duty at the time, of course, but true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. I'll take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Hold it! Uh, we'll see about that. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. Oh, sorry. Just the the phrase "nothing to report" kind of gave me flashbacks of when I was on a ship. It's nothing to concern yourself with, don't worry. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. I could swear to that on the yards on us, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burned copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garrett household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were the, at the scene of the crime the entire time? Aha! Could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well. Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hands? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir! That book is in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back and how the book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. The question is to what? Uh, uh oh. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? No, we are not badgering you. We already went over this. Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? You're- you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I wasn't really- I mean, what's she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I- I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses, I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. Yeah, oh, sure. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? You've been speaking. What has changed? Yes, Miss Bean, I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. She's changing her testimony again? Man, this girl's actually really helpful. She just changes her testimonies and gives us new cracks. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that. That Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my rolly won't. Duly noted, Miss Pete. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? We shall see. I know what I saw. My eyes never let me down. My sense of, dir of direction is a little off sometimes, though. Hold it! Miss Beat, nobody is questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. Uh. And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying around the sky. All very clear. You you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Poor sense of direction. And I was talking about... Did the bot... Okay. Back to the map. So, crime happened here. The window is around here from one side of the street to the other. Maybe there was some 
Maybe she had some misdirection stuff here and she thought the crime happened on one side of the street but it actually happened on the other. I don't know. It could be something there, just thinking. Oh yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Rolly. He gets ever so cross. Oh, look at her portrait down there. She's very cute. Excuse me. Constable Beat, is there a problem? Uh, uh, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening as well. You mean, Miss Beat lost her way? Don't lose your way on the night of the incident tonight. Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the next speed over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back in ten minutes, but my darling was gone a good fifteen. Oh, Rolly, you're such a tease. But the reason I was... I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Crowley's so romantic. He saved up for what for with farthings and happenings he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. You're okay there, man. You seem a bit out of sorts. Yes, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it until now. How'd you, my darling? Ah! Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yes. But that was just between us. No talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. Oh my god. Wait a second. That was a very weird reaction. Oh my god, is the sleepy freaking... Is the sleepy cop actually corrupt? I called him... <laughs> I've joked about that once or twice. But, oh god, is he actually bad and the wife is good? Because usually you would think that the starry-eyed girl is the one that's in the fault and that's wrong, but it seems the opposite in this case. What was that about? Hudswell Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any in in useful insight, Mr. Narahodo. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Miss Beat about the bouquet. Miss Beat, this bouquet you just now mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Man. I feel like he's slowly turning evil on the side there. I, I fear for this wife. What happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Hold it! You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back, I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Rolly gave me. It was in a dark spot where the streetlights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then, you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on. Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again, but the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. In case you need reminding, Miss Beat, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me. I'd gone over to the wrong side of the road. Although, I'm gonna blame the bouquet this time. I can't think how it got there, really, I can't. This frickin' dude. This dude on the left. You. You bastard. You, you moved the scene of the crime. I don't know why, but you did. I almost just pressed space. This dude moved the scene of the crime, I can't believe it. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. No, it's the... 
No, the opposite here is what happens. The corpse moved from one side of the road to the other. Ooh, kill us indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose will be bought, bought me. With that change... With that change from the gutter he spent so long collecting. By Bouquet. Do you perhaps mean... This sorry solitary rose. Solitary rose. Oh! Oh, yes! Yes, that's it! That's the bouquet Rolly bought me for our anniversary! With all... With all bits of change he found in the gutter. Maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Van Zarks, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garretab household. I knew it! In front of the Garretab's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the, the morning as it lay when the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have it back now, please? Mm. Oh, I think for good measure this road should be added to the court record as evidence. Oh. Anniversary Rose. The shock at seeing the stabbed victim caused Miss Beat to drop the rose where she stood. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief. Rest, rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget, Miss Meat. Uh. Hold it! Up in a report. I'm gonna try just going through this. Just going through this, don't mind me. La ba 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 da la ba ba. Well, Mr. Narhoto, what do you make of all this? Uh, yes. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here now. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Miss Garadub, Miss Garadub was hiding something from us. But it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's, I'm, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Alright. Let's do one little... Let's do one little save here. Uh, see windows. Make sure nothing was disturbed, huh? God. What happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way. I have no idea. I can think of a few things we could present. Objection. No. Let's just consider the implications of that statement for a moment, shall we? No, no, I don't think we will. What implications, Council? Nothing strikes me about it. Um, exactly. There's nothing striking about it. Uh, what does strike me is your propensity for the inane, however. Uh, I need to clear my head and come up with this from a different angle. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment. Nothing strange to report on that front. Objection. The rose. Rose on this, maybe. You claim, Constable B, there is nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you are guarding the scene. But that cannot be. Oh, try to fall asleep on us, will you? What do you mean to say? 
In your testimony just now, Miss B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime when the, with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! You are sold the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that me of that mega bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it belongs. Wow. Meager? Objection! You're being very rude, dude. Like, yo, even if it is a single rose, like, you're being extremely rude to this girl. But if that were the case... Why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it! Sorry, the person voice acting me yawned yet again. It's kind of peculiar. Constable Beat swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me! It has nothing to do with the case! That's... that's why I really didn't mention it, I'm sure! No, because sadly it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way round. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Miss Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Garadab's book. Mr. Garadab's copy of The Lion's Pride, which was thrown out of the window by his wife. Would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Miss Beat's bouquet... ...should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street. But in fact... ...it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's house. There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. But why would he move them? What purpose does it serve him? It's not like he had any... It's not like he's the one that committed the crime, so why did he move it? What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my really di My really's done something wrong. Don't you... Don't you dare listen to a word that a scrawny lawyer says. With the renal... What are you on about books and bouquets? Why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh good, Miss Garadab's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Miss Garadab. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Narhoto. Old man is pissed off. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! Tampering? You've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an, such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered at the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must determine... Demand that you subs substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? It's Sosaki Natsume. No, it's Chief Vort. Ch uh, Stronheart. I've heard of some Japanese name before. Uh, damn, he only. Damn, only 23. I don't know why he... Poor dude. Take that! Oh well. Gonna freaking accuse an officer. This is gonna go well. Obviously there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly Beat, it was you. Whoa, a policeman, a member of Scotland Yard. What nonsense, why would I really do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband. I, I mean, clearly. Otherwise he wouldn't be married to you, duh. Freaking... 
dummy. No, Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Miss B. You said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police office to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up. It's all nonsense. It's all lies. What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him. He did it. Objection. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Miss Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Uh, well, well. Objection! First, you make ac accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right. He's right. But my husband and I just happened to be there. That's all. So why would it, we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Narhoto, have you... have you managed to solve this mystery? I'm still thinking of it, honestly. Kotzel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevo irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. <sighs> we still have two different thing. We still have the updated case file and the and the warrant card. Constable Constable Beat's motive for tampering the crime scene was to hide. Uh. Victim, perhaps? Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? Y you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. I mean, it, technically it was. They were just stabbed on the other side of the road. What? What? I'm beginning to wonder where this t tumultu tumultuous trial will end, Council. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Uh, bada bing, bada boom. Take that! But, but that's... On the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. On the evening in question. Miss Garadab's book fell directly down from the open uh, window above. And your bouquet, Miss B, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good gracious! Objection. Somebody's getting fucked. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. Oh, no, no. They, they might have. But you forget that one of them has a terrible sense of direction and the other's the, the, the one that tampered at the scene. That, that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. 
It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical... There was the typical London fog on the ground. When he saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid... That was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it, it can't have been. Constable B then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted this, the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in the sprint. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? Oh, look at him on the left. He's, you, he's totally awake. The bouquet, I presume. Very ironic that what he gave to show his love for his wife ended up being his undoing. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Van Zyke said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet. That was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rolly Beat. Oh, shit. Oh, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Uh, you're playing the I didn't hear what you just said card, huh? You think that shit's gonna fly, little man? Huh? Did I miss anything important? Oh, Rolly? It isn't true, is it? What what the lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding righteous man I know. Bro, this, this girl about to have a divorce over this, I bet. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out and everything exposed. Oddly, it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good God, you! Holy shit. Order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, really? Why? Why would you do something like this? She says that she still has the twinkly eyes and smiling mouth. Moving a corpse is, is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I... I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all of this. For damaging the Yard's reputation for... for everything. I have a possible explanation. For why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat f felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Von Zykes, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. Get fucking styled on, nerd. Look at your stupid face. Look at you. You're so dumb. You're a big old dummy. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. 
I really like Santa Judge. He's a nice dude. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England. Japan. It makes no difference where you're from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feeling behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable unthink actions? Uh, patrolling officer... Oh, right. I bet you it's this. Any crime falls under the jurisdiction of the Beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered on his Beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. So, it must be this. Because he didn't want to... He didn't want to have to be part of the investigation? Oh, right. He was on his day off with his wife. Is that it, maybe? He was on his... He didn't want his time with his wife to be interrupted? That's all I can think about. Maybe that. Take that! I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I've only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that, though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keep of the peace looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? Oh! On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh yes! It was our very first wedding anniversary. V and on that day, Van Zyke's heart grew two sizes larger. Not three, because he's not... He's not as kind as the Grinch, still. So. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Miss Beat stumbled upon a crime scene along Briar Road. Yep. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, what must have gone through the man's mind. But sir, just on that particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Miss Speed puts up a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to, me, to lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says... When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation and help detectives. Oh ho! Constable Beat. Is that, or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It, w it was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized that where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. 
when a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman is must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the... This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the ne to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Mersham Street and then... Yikes. He just wanted to enjoy his anniversary. Not even a bad guy, just made a bad decision. I can't blame him though, considering his job and what it entails and how it, it was his one day off. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, Constable. I just wanted... Just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, really? Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening the celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring beat's care. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon. Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would have never left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Oh, I see your meaning now. But God got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Rolly, that was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rolly. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other in total? Huh? Oh, um... Four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely. Four. Three of them drop in Mr. Natsume in the fourth. Being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garrett household, of course. But... What made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, well, so that's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, this victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, the lion's pride that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Um, interesting. It's been updated, so I guess we're not done here. And because of that, next time on Great Ace Attorney, we'll continue and see what the case has left in store for us after this confession. Adios, ciao, and bye-bye. Signing off until the next time. Ja, matane.